I held a gun in my hands. I sat on the edge of the hospital bed, dressed once again in real clothes. I say real when they were white and unthemed. Simple trousers, a t-shirt, and a shoulder holster. I held a gun in my hand. It's difficult to describe how comfortable its hard ceramic weight was in my hands and how uncomfortable I was because of that. I had never held a gun before. But my hands, the hands of this altered body, knew exactly how to hold the grip, with the tang resting over the web of my firing hand so that it would be steady if I raised it and aimed. My finger rested naturally on the trigger loop, but not on the trigger. Barrel, forward sight, energy port, rear sight, power level indicator, biometric sensor, I knew these as intimately as I knew Jonathan's face. How could I have killed him? Skylar walked to stand in front of me. My government-appointed contact had shooed the other two out of the room after they'd finished testing me to make sure that whatever I was worked right. Look, I don't know what happened after your last check-in to affect your original state of mind, but the fact is that she did murder your husband. You're wrong. I lifted the gun, and safety instinct kept the muzzle low, pointing away from him, even though it wouldn't hurt him. Not him. They hadn't trusted me with an unrestricted energy weapon, not when programming it could make sure that it could only hurt one person. My original self. I wouldn't kill anyone. You believe you wouldn't. I get that. But she did it. She murdered Jonathan. If a random person had killed him... What would you do? At the thought of someone harming Jonathan, the visceral urge to strangle cramped my hand around the gun. If someone else had murdered him, I would kill them. What I didn't know was if that urge for violence had always been there, or if it was something that had been added. I wouldn't just turn vigilante, if that's what you're asking. I'd trust legal processes. You are the legal process. If your original had turned herself in, there'd be a whole different conversation. But that's not what happened. She killed Jonathan, and then she went off grid. How do you know that? Look, I know it's disorienting for you that weeks have passed since your last memory, but I promise you, there has been an investigation and a trial. Due process has been served. Creating you, that's the result. He drummed his fingers on his knee and stood, Tell you what, this was on the agenda for later, but I can show you the murder scene now. My spine went cold. Where? Your apartment. He swiped an invisible tablet in the air. Do you want to see it? This virtual space was made by the crime scene investigators and has all the metadata you could ask for. I clenched the gun harder, as if it were Jonathan's hand. I'm... Will he be... God, no. I mean... I have those images, but you don't want to see them. Skylar held out his hand. I'll just show you the scene. Shivering, I reached out with my free hand and took his. With that contact, I could see his theme. It morphed the appearance of the room around us, blanking out the hospital and leaving me in my kitchen, holding the hand of a government agent who thought I was a murderer. The kitchen was a quaint, open floor plan from the 2010s, with a massive granite-topped island in the middle of the room. We used old-fashioned bar stools when we ate at home. The one nearest me was tipped on its side at an angle, as if it were pointing at the pool of blood. A handprint smeared out from it. In bloody block letters, someone had written, Liar. On the floor, with blood and fibers sticking to the base, lay a small replica of Rodin's The Kiss. We'd picked that up in Paris on our first anniversary. It had a provenance that dated to the same era as our apartment, and the purchase had seemed hopelessly romantic. Hauling it home had been a chore. I remember Jonathan making a face and joking that at least the weight meant no one could doubt that it was real. Skylar reached out and tapped the air over the blood. A woman's voice began speaking. I arrived on scene at 1517 hours and was greeted by Detective Skylar Arakawa with the Cascadia Police Department Criminal Investigation Bureau. I was directed into the kitchen of apartment number 932 where the decedent was found. 
The room was in a state of disarray that showed signs of a struggle. In the kitchen, I noted a sculpture, a set of knives which were capped, a ceramic vase, a bowl, 12 oranges, multiple cotton swabs, and a tray of leftover sushi. One bar stool had been overturned, and the word liar was written on the floor in the victim's blood. A white plastic bag was noted in the trash can in the kitchen that contained orange peels, human skin, and a broken craft knife covered in blood. My hand was sweating inside Skylar's grip. I retained the broken blade and sculpture as evidence. These items were documented and inventoried and placed in the evidence room at the medical examiner's office. The body was fully supine on the floor next to the kitchen island. The head was pointing west. The feet were pointing east. The body was cool to the touch. Rigor mortis was relenting. Lividity was consistent with body position, purple in color, and fixed. Purge was noted coming from the decedent's nose. A small area on the floor under the decedent's legs was covered in what appeared to be purge. External trauma was noted at the temple consistent with the blood, hair, and brain matter on the sculpture. For a moment, the sculpture lit up and a glowing circle illuminated what I'd thought were fibers. Hair. It was Jonathan's hair. In addition to this, the victim's face had a series of spiral carvings cut into the flesh. Based on the minimal bleeding, I believe this occurred after death. I pronounced Jonathan Gentry deceased at 1,520 hours. I jerked my hand out of Skylar's grip and my kitchen faded away, taking with it the woman's voice and the sculpture and the blood, Jonathan's blood. Tremors shook through me and kept my breath trapped in shallow gasps. Murdered? By me? I couldn't... That could not have been me. Skylar blinked and swiped his hand through the air. He looked at me and winced. This is why we usually wait. I swallowed to keep from vomiting. Carvings in his skin. Spirals. Like the ones I carved in oranges. <sighs> you understand what to do next? <gasps> In hindsight, laughing might not have been the best choice, but it was that or sobbing, and sometimes things are so horrifying that it twists out sideways. The pamphlet on living as a provisional replica lay wadded on the floor where I had thrown it. I have four days to find and execute myself for a crime I don't remember doing. <sighs> I know. I'm sorry. Sorry? This needs a little more than sorry. Will you still be sorry next week if I fail, if this version of me dies? At least he had the grace to look uncomfortable. Please believe me that if we had been able to find your original, the judge would not have issued a warrant for your creation. Teletry dramas aside, provisional replicas are extremely, extremely rare. Well, that's comforting. Fair. All I can offer as comfort is that if you succeed, you'll take her place and can return to your normal life. Seriously? They had clearly edited me to kill, and according to them, my original had murdered, and that was the bigger issue for me. My husband is dead. There is no normal life to return to. Holly, look at me. His eyes were serious on either side of his narrow nose. Remember that a family member can petition to have a loved one revived. I swallowed. Jonathan had a DNR on his account. Surely he didn't intend that restriction to include murder. But Jonathan's parents were Southern Baptist and believed in the sanctity of the body. They'd use nanites to stay healthy, sure, but once someone died, once their soul had left their body, they viewed reviving as pulling a soul out of heaven at best and a walking soulless abomination at worst. Oh, sure, they believed in the resurrection of the body, but only with the second coming. They would never revive him. I'd thought it so much religious nonsense, but now, I looked at the gun in my hand and felt the familiar weight of it. Whose experience had they edited into me? You're asking me to actually kill. That's not something I would do. But you did. Skylar shrugged. Just make sure you check in every day. Yes, sir. I'll be sure to keep you updated on my progress. Do you want your husband back or not? 
And what choice did I really have? As a provisional replica, the nanites in my body would expire after four days, taking me with them. I suppose I could have just sat on the hospital bed and waited to expire, but I holstered the gun and left. If I was a soulless abomination, all I knew was that I loved my husband with every fiber of my created body. That central part of my being seemed unchanged. Except, somehow, impossibly, I had murdered Jonathan. <laughs>